A lot of people despise goldenrod because they mistakenly think it causes their allergies. But instead, there are many goldenrod benefits that will surprise you. This episode shares the medicinal uses of goldenrod plant in the Solidago genus. I'll specifically share six powerful goldenrod benefits. I'll also share why this probably isn't the plant causing your allergies and what may be causing it instead. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. When the tall spires of goldenrod begin to boast their yellow blooms, I know it's one of my favorite times of the year. Goldenrod flowers mean long days, hot weather, and the refreshing feel of swimming in lakes and rivers. It also means that the harvest season is on and it's the perfect time to be foraging to enjoy the many medicinal uses of the goldenrod plant. Goldenrod grows all over the world and many species are used as medicine. I recommend using local field guides or going on local native plant walks to find out what's growing near you. Do you have experience with goldenrod benefits? I'd love to hear about it in the comments on YouTube or on the official podcast page, herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Your comments mean a lot to me, and I love cultivating a community of kind-hearted, plant-loving folks. Plus, it's always interesting and insightful to hear about the experiences of plant lovers out there, and you never know, your suggestion may also help others. Okay, let's dive in. Goldenrod Energetics. One of the best ways to get acquainted with goldenrod is to taste and smell it. Whenever I find a goldenrod plant, I like to crush a leaf between my fingers and then spend a few moments appreciating its unique aromatics. After that, if I'm in an area that's safe to harvest, I also like to taste part of the leaf. And after doing this for many years, I've really begun to appreciate the many flavors and nuances of goldenrod. Getting to know your local goldenrod can also help you to best use your specific varieties. For example, if your goldenrod is strongly astringent, then the goldenrod benefits will be best for tightening lax tissues like leaky mucus or diarrhea. Goldenrod is both pungent and astringent, so its aromatics make it pungent, and as you taste it, you can immediately get a feel for that astringent or tightening and toning quality. One of the most pronounced medicinal uses of the goldenrod plant is for the urinary system and the upper respiratory system. It really excels at tightening and toning tissues to stop excessive secretions. Goldenrod for the urinary system. The first goldenrod benefit is for the urinary system. And this isn't something that's new. Goldenrod has a long history of use for the urinary system. Herbalists regularly use it for urinary tract infections as well as for strengthening the kidneys. As mentioned, goldenrod is both astringent and antiseptic. By tightening and toning the tissues of the urinary system, as well as providing action against bacteria, goldenrod is well suited to addressing bladder and urinary infections. Eclectic herbalists and physicians used goldenrod for kidney stones in the 18 and 1900s, and the German Commission E has officially approved goldenrod for the treatment of bladder and urinary system inflammations. Naturopathic doctor and urinary specialist Dr. Eric Yarnell recommends goldenrod for interstitial cystitis due to its inflammation modulating abilities. There are so many medicinal uses of goldenrod for the urinary system. 
For example, one clinical trial found that an herbal formula including goldenrod, birch, and cranberry was able to significantly reduce the microbial colonization in patients with indwelling urinary catheters. Peter Holmes, herbalist and author of Energetics of Western Herbs, writes, Goldenrod is one of the very few known trophic restoratives to the kidney organ. In any chronic kidney condition, this remedy is an indispensable asset and should be used long term. Goldenrod for seasonal allergies. The second goldenrod plant benefit is for allergic rhinitis or seasonal allergies. I use it in many of my seasonal allergy tincture formulas and I often combine it with peach and plantain. And I've seen it completely eliminate those itchy red eyes, runny nose, and excessive sneezing symptoms for many people. Goldenrod also works really well for cat dander allergies. I typically recommend this as a tincture and suggest that people keep titrating up the dose until relief is found. Many people despise goldenrod and they blame it for their late summer and fall sniffles. However, the more likely culprit is ragweed, which is in the ambrosia species. Here's why. Goldenrod is pollinated by insects and not by wind. As a result, the pollen is heavy and it's sticky and it just doesn't readily float through the air and thus get into people's noses, causing those symptoms. Meanwhile, ragweed is often blooming at the same time and unlike goldenrod's vivacious yellow blooms, it has these really inconspicuous flowers. So while goldenrod may catch our attention visually, ragweed's wind spreading pollen might be the more likely culprit. Goldenrod for muscle pain and arthritis. The third goldenrod benefit is for relieving pain. Especially in recent times, goldenrod has gained popularity for relieving many different aches and pains from chronic arthritis to acute injuries. It can be infused into an oil and then rubbed into those painful areas for these purposes. A couple of clinical trials have been done to evaluate Chilean goldenrod, which is Solidago chilensis, and looking at its ability to address pain. In one study, the topical cream was found to decrease the pain of people with tendonitis in the wrist and hand. Another study found that it decreased pain and increased flexibility in people with lower back pain. Henriette Kress, who is a fantastic herbalist who's been a guest on the show, says this about goldenrod. Goldenrod relieves most muscle aches. Try it for pains nothing else has touched. Give the oil a try for itches and swellings too. Goldenrod for healing wounds. The fourth goldenrod benefit is for healing the skin. This name Solidago means to make whole. Historical references cite using goldenrod poultices for healing wounds and for use on burns. I actually don't see a lot of contemporary herbalists using it this way and it seems like a great avenue to explore. Herbalist Robert Dale Rogers shares this about goldenrod. The fresh leaves make a good addition to burn salves, combining well with yarrow and plantain oils. The dry and powdered leaves make a good styptic agent for shaving cuts. A tasty tea high in antioxidants. The fifth goldenrod benefit is for modulating inflammation. Goldenrod is very high in antioxidants. Antioxidants are often called the key to good health and longevity. They can rid the body of free radicals, thus reducing oxygenation of our cells. Goldenrod is a really excellent source of the constituent rutin. This is a flavonoid and it's well known for its antioxidant benefits and is considered especially beneficial for heart health. Rutin can increase capillary strength and support healthy circulation throughout the entire cardiovascular system. It's also being studied for its ability to stop angiogenesis and therefore the possibility of playing a role in stopping certain kinds of cancers. However, there have yet to be any clinical trials showing goldenrod's abilities to address cancer, but maybe one day. Goldenrod's high antioxidant levels may make it an ally for people with insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes. However, again, there haven't been clinical trials to that effect but I think it would be a great match because of that inflammatory marker. 
I really love that one of the medicinal uses of the goldenrod plant is to modulate inflammation because plants that can help us with chronic inflammation are really a big deal because chronic inflammation is the leading cause of most chronic diseases, including heart disease, arthritis, back pain, skin conditions like eczema and acne, type 2 diabetes, like I mentioned, and so many more. One of my passions is helping people figure out how to best work with herbs and lifestyle changes to powerfully reduce chronic inflammation so that they can finally address the root cause of their chronic illness. I have a free training about this called How to Use Herbs to Transform Your Health to Get More Energy and Vitality Without Expensive Supplements or Even a Restrictive Elimination Diet. You can access this free training at herb-training.com. For relieving colds and the flu. The sixth and last goldenrod benefit is for rel relieving many symptoms during a cold or flu. It's a mild diaphoretic helping to open up the pores and release heat through the skin so we can use it to support a person during the fever process, especially when they feel hot. As an astringent and antimicrobial, it can soothe a sore, swollen throat. You can try it as a tea or you can infuse the fresh herbs into honey. It also helps to break up excessive and stuck mucus in the lungs, which can then be expectorated, uh, which can then help with coughing. Or if there's too much leaky mucus in the nose, like your nose is just running and running, you can consider goldenrod for that too. Goldenrod isn't always the first herb that people think of for symptoms of colds and the flu, but I think it's well worth trying out. How to identify goldenrod? There are over a hundred species within the Solidago genus, and many are commonly used in a similar manner. Each species does have its own varying aromatics and taste, therefore the medicinal qualities of one species may be a bit different from another. For example, one might be a little bit more bitter, one might be a bit more pungent or more astringent. What's interesting is herbalists can't seem to agree on whether or not goldenrod is cooling or warming. And I suspect that this has to do with the species variation and just the medicinal gifts found within each one. Another thing about goldenrod is it can be a little bit difficult to correctly key out the solidago species because they readily hybridize. Good thing is that solidagos aren't harmful, but they can look like other potentially toxic plants like as Senecio uh, genus. So you really wanna be able to correctly identify this plant always, right? That's just crucial. Um, I recommend consulting with your local field guides and check with local sources to see if your local varieties have a history of use. Solidago canadensis is a perennial herb that can be grown easily from seed and it's very common in North America. It grows from rhizomatous roots and can reach up to six feet tall. It generally grows in clumps, which are often clones. And because of its tenacious growing patterns, it's often not recommended to grow it in the garden. However, I've been growing it in my garden for several years and it seems to be doing fine. The leaves grow opposite and are lance-shaped. Goldenrod bursts into bloom in later summer months and it's the small yellow aster flowers that grow at the top of the goldenwood spires in large clumps, really showing off lots of color. Goldenrod leaves and flowers are used for herbal medicine and ideally you wanna harvest the entire stalks, leaving behind some of the leaves just before the plant blooms. If you harvest the plant while it's in full bloom, those yellow asters are just gonna puff up and dry out, kind of like you see with dandelions. Goldenrod plant preparations. Some people may have an adverse reaction to the goldenrod plant, so it's always best to consume a small amount when you're just trying an herb for the first time. Goldenrod tea is tasty and it's an effective herbal medicine. One tip is that the longer you brew it and the more herbs that you use, the stronger the medicine will be. For just a pleasing beverage that's generally supportive of health and has a lot of antioxidants, you can try one to two teaspoons of goldenrod leaves and flowers per eight ounces of water. And then you can increase the steeping time and the amount of herbs as needed. For a more diuretic effect, you can drink the tea cold. For a more diaphoretic effect, you can drink it hot. Goldenrod can be formulated into different tea blends for different purposes. The following tea blend highlights the medicinal uses of goldenrod plant for the urinary system. I call it goldenrod tea for urinary support. 
This tea can be taken to address a urinary infection or taken regularly to prevent them. So I have to warn you, this is not the yummiest tasting tea, but it is antimicrobial. It does have that diuretic quality, which are both really important actions when you're dealing with an infection. For best results for the urinary, urinary system, I would drink it lukewarm or cool. The yield of this is one and a half cups, and what you'll need is a quarter cup of finely crumbled dried goldenrod leaves and flowers, and then one tablespoon of finely crumbled dried yarrow leaves and flowers, and then two teaspoons of finely crumbled dried mallow leaves or marshmallow leaves. To make this, you just wanna place all the herbs in a pint jar and then fill that jar with just boiled water. Give it a good stir, then cover it with a lid or a towel and infuse for 10 to 15 minutes, then strain off the herbs. You can drink this throughout the day, but drink it within 24 hours and then make a new cup. This recipe comes from our course, Rooted Medicine Circle. If you wanna learn more about how to make potent herbal medicines from the plants that grow around you, then check out this 10 month online course, which enrolls every January. In this community-based course, we guide you step-by-step -step in making your own powerful herbal medicines in your own kitchen. Visit rootedmedicinecircle.com to get all the details and sign up for the waiting list. Don't miss out on your free printable recipe card for goldenrod tea. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can click on the link in the video description, or if listening to the podcast, you can go directly to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Also in the video description and show notes, I've included other helpful links, like where you can buy goldenrod, as well as both of my books. And if you enjoyed this video on the medicinal uses of goldenrod plant and you value trusted herbal information, then I hope you'll stick around. The best way to get started is to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. One of the best ways to retain and then fully understand something you just learned is to share it in your own words. So with that in mind, I invite you to share your takeaways with me and the entire Herbs with Rosalie community. You can leave comments on my YouTube channel on the herbswithrosaliepodcast.com show notes page, or just simply hit reply to the Wednesday emails. I read every comment that comes in and I'm excited to hear your herbal thoughts, whether it's about goldenrod plant or herbs for the urinary system and on and on. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks, and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get a gold star and this herbal tidbit. If you hang out with goldenrod for very long, you'll quickly become acquainted with the goldenrod spider. This spider turns yellow or white, depending on which flower it's inhabiting. And goldenrod spiders are just voracious hunters. They're often capturing and devouring insects three times their size. When I harvest goldenrod, I gently relocate many goldenrod spiders. Goldenrod also attracts many other beneficial pollinators, so always leave some behind. <laughs>